Alrighty, hello, hello everybody. This is Kirusho here. Now, whenever we last left off, Deku, he and his team were getting ready. Along with that, they were talking. So, a brief summary of how I left things in the last episode. Whenever we last left off, there has been a year time skip. That is an important thing to mention. So, if someone randomly clicked on this video, whenever it appeared on your timeline for My Hero Academia, what are you doing here? Leave. Because I know that's happened to me before. I get recommended my own videos for some reason. YouTube. Anyways, let's continue. With that being said, now, let's go. Deku and everyone are ready. And they have already left. In fact, Deku has been actually told to take charge of the scenario. The League will be there if he needs to get some help and or assistance, but his team should be big enough. Now, the place they're going to is another Abstergo warehouse. In fact, it is supposed to be a safe house from what Deku has found online. Let's continue. With that being said, Deku and everyone would leave, and arrive a couple days later. At this place. At this point, everyone has somewhat of a makeover. Except for Mina. She's the hardest person to give a makeover. So she usually does at least wear a mask. And a lot of makeup around her face, along with dyeing her hair and contact lenses. She wears a partial mask so she doesn't have to do it all the time. Now let's continue. Everyone, they are walking around in public. This is actually a mall plaza. They are looking for their targets. And Deku and Momo are just sitting down at a coffee shop. These two taking a stationary position in one part of the mall, while everyone else is somewhat split up going out like they are on dates. And you have the teams. <clears throat> Deku and Momo, Ida and Ochako, Mina and, well, Bakugo, Kendo and Todoroki, and, well, Tokuyami. Tokuyami is more or less just that one guy checking out t-shirts in a band store. So he doesn't really seem very out of place. And that store may have a specific name. It's a very weird topic. Anyways, with that being said, let's continue. They are waiting for their targets. And Deku would stand up after taking a sip of his coffee. And someone just put it back down, beginning to walk away. Telling Momo that he'll be right back. As he leaves, following a man in a crowd, actually getting his hidden blade ready, and walking directly up to the man. The man shows no sign of tech, and the information he has on him will be important. But before he can even continue, this is whenever a loud gunshot can be heard. And people begin to scatter. Deku actually taking a bit of cover, ducking down into the crowd, as he looks around for where the shot was heard from. Everyone else gets things ready, as police are immediately br coming to the area, along with the local heroes. As Abstergo would start another broadcast, talking about the vigilante is in the building. They have somewhat been creating a squad specifically tailored for the police force to help take down the vigilante, along with what they call their experimental cork nullifiers. Deku getting ready. 
he does one simple thing whenever people are running around and really, really confused. He does at least run in the direction of his targets. And whenever he meets up into the, with the man, he does bump into him and see his face. The man looks directly up at Deku as Deku somewhat smirks, running forwards and stabbing his blade upwards into the man's throat. As he goes for the man's suitcase, immediately just prying it open and grabbing all the information, and stuffing it into his jacket, as he takes off running. It's somewhat being caught on surveillance before Deku stops, turns his hand, and, and brings his hand up into his pocket. <sighs> turning off the cameras and turning out the lights. Everyone just scattering, meeting up later in a parking garage. After making sure that none of them were followed, Deku basically laying out the information and a bit, well, confused about everything. Deku, he's trying to figure out exactly where the shot came from, thinking about it in his head. The only way the shot would have, well, hit anywhere around his targets, or, well, any one, in fact, would be if someone set it up on a timer. Even then, that is highly unlikely. Now, that means that someone was there who knew about us. I think... Hmm. The only ones who would have known are people inside the Creed. Other than that, I think we might have outside interference. I'm pretty sure Fancy had something to do with this. Deku getting annoyed. At least going over the information. The place they're heading to is in fact correct. Confirming their suspicions, as later on in the night, they would begin the raid. Now, they would get into the building after Mina brings up her hand and sprays acid on the lock, immediately just smashing the door, breaking it open, saying that they're inside. Now what? Them all splitting up. Ida immediately begins to run around along with actually using the jump kit Deku gave him. All of them are outfitted with this tech. Along with that, they do need to actually figure things out. This place will be highly, highly, well, unstable if they are seen. Meaning Abstergo might activate a bit of a self-precaution or self-preserving secret. They would keep a lot of information in these places, meaning that they would be ready to take them down at any time, if they need to. They may be backup servers, but they might have backups for the backups. He's seen it once, so it's not a realm out of the realm of possibility. Now, with that being said, they would be looking around the warehouse. It is mostly empty. Until they do at least find a computer and it having a bit of information on it. Talking about a deal gone wrong and how they had to come back here. And everyone's at least ready, thinking they may have just walked into an ambush. Deku using his tech to look around the warehouse and basically scan it. He hasn't found any, well, person. He doesn't see it on the cameras, so the person either has an invisibility quirk or, well, they're not here. It's not too far off of the realm of possibility, though. <clears throat> so, what we need to do is, we need to find out exactly where the person will be hiding. I have one idea, though. Deku just walking upwards into the office. Everyone just standing there a bit confused. As a loud sound can be heard, along with a part of the building feeling like it's basically shaking as something comes up out of the ground, it being a weird elevator. Deku just saying that he called it. Now, with that being said, Deku would take a deep breath and walk in, everyone doing the same. The elevator is a bit crowded, but they all need to be ready. 
as Momo would make a shield. And a firearm. Actually beginning to pass them out. As the door would open. Momo immediately just walking forward to the giant shield and getting ready. As the place is empty. That's not right. So, what is going on? There should be Templars here. I'm not liking the looks of this, guys, but then again, this place is covered in cobwebs and dust. If someone was here, then they weren't here recently. Now, with that being said, they would begin to look around. Ida using his quirk to move throughout the building at a lower speed, or a lower gear. They know that this place is virtually empty. So, exactly what do they have hidden here? Them beginning to go through a bit more test. Or at least, files they find of test. Apparently this place has been where people have been tested on by Abstergo. Along with that, they actually have Animus fragments, or quite possibly just pieces of fragments people have in their memories. Basically, people whose family members may have been assassins. However, it is unknown what happened to them. Things are weird down here. But they do at least find evidence, and videos of Abstergo officials. Along with that, one of Fancy Man, before Deku took his eye. Deku actually smirking at the evidence, and relishing it. This has been something he has not seen in quite some time. A video of Fancy, revealing his face and keeping it exposed. Him being front and center for things. He usually sees things to a computer screen or a glass wall. He's never ever in the room up close to see what he's doing. Ordering other people to do it, because he thinks that that keeps his hands washed from the blood. Would it just soaks them more? As Deku at least downloads it onto a USB. And begins to actually do the same to everything. Along with the backup servers and extra files. And things on paper. As they hear the elevator. Deku doing one simple thing bringing his hands onto the computer and turning off the elevator, looking inside. The elevator is full of men. And they are, well, in heavy gear. Along with them carrying a firearm, well, multiple firearms. And quite possibly being part of the Templars. So, they did have a plan here. Well, don't worry everyone. I have it. Everyone a bit more confused. Deku is in a very good mood. And well, training with Juno has been a bit easier. He's understanding a lot more of the language, and somewhat being able to speak it sometimes. Deku turning the elevator back on and walking out. As the men would see him immediately going to train their guns on him and going to pull the trigger. Before Deku does one simple thing, his eyes glowing in the room somewhat changing around them. Now, do you hear me? Now, all the men are confused exactly what is this kid doing. And they somewhat can't stop. They wanted to pull the triggers but now they can't. They were ordered to capture this kid, disable his cork with his bullets, and take him in. That should have been simple. But why can't they move? What exactly is going on? Alright, agents. Listen to me. Your bosses have been lying to you. And, well, don't worry about it. You think I'm the bad guy. But in reality, I'm not. Now, I'm going to give you ultimatums. And if you don't listen to me, then, well, you're going to find out exactly what happens. 
Now, one of the men would actually just start laughing a bit, telling Deku that he doesn't have any power here. Your core can disable us, but how long will it last? Ten minutes? It's not going to be long enough for you to get away. We got a strike force of a dozen men, probably even more, upstairs. So exactly how are you going to deal with them? Deku just turning to look at him, his eyes completely yellow and coursing with power, as he somewhat just smirks. As Deku would say one little thing. Well, that makes this a lot easier. So, I'm guessing I'll make you the example. Now, everyone who watches Deku does one little thing. Bring his hand up to his, well, into the bottom of his chin. The man immediately just mimicking Deku. His hand actually shaking as the man actually does begin to somewhat scream. Not sure exactly what is going on. As Deku somewhat just smirks. And telling the man that. If you want to live, I said you have to listen to me. Now, I can do this to all of you. Not that hard, actually. It's quite simply annoying, though. So, once again, if you believe me to be the bad guy, I will play the role. I am saying that I will let you all leave. You just need to turn around and tell that strike force. They don't have any power here. In fact, tell that to your sergeant upstairs. I know he thinks that that little AMP will disable my quirk. In fact, it won't. I'll just turn my quirk back on. And do to him what I'm doing to you right now. Along with turning those RPGs, 50 cals, and anything you have up there, off. Tell him not to use the gas grenades or the sleeping gas either. That will be annoying. Now, as Deku says this, he would just let go of control of the men. As one of them does try to open fire, Deku sending out a shockwave in his direction. Basically throwing the bullets out of his path, or off their path and upwards into the ceiling. Deku just bringing out his hand and throwing out electricity, and fire, scorching the man to a crisp. As Deku just looks back at the rest of them, them all trying to pile into the elevator. The man Deku threatened the first off is basically crying in the corner as they get up to the surface. Deku just turning to his team, them all a bit, well, surprised. Bako actually somewhat laughing. That threat, it always works, so. It will take a minute. No. With that being said, Deku and everyone will walk into the elevator and head upstairs. As they do so, Deku, he would watch as whenever he the elevator opens, he is completely surrounded. And he immediately heard bolt, well, gunshots being fired. Him setting out a very, very powerful shockwave, blowing everyone away from him. His friends in the elevator somewhat being knocked backwards, but they were at least ready for it, and were able to hold on to something. Deku is nearly taking the place down. In fact, the place is completely shaking. A lot of people are being sent flying along with bullets ricocheting off, well, the force he created. Deku basically just waving his hands to the left and to the right, taking all of them down creating illusions to make them think that they're going crazy. People are somewhat firing upon each other, and their allies, thinking that they are enemies, or well, at least animals attacking. One man seems unaffected, though. He is making his way towards Deku, and trying to shake this off. Deku just staring at him, bringing up a firearm and immediately firing at him, as bullets basically bounce off the man, 
They're not even touching him. Deku is confused. As he does pull out the apple. The man is somewhat staring at Deku while he's holding it. The man is somewhat smirking as he holds up his hand to reveal the Ring of Eden. Deku, he's unsure of what that is. So he just thinks that the man is being, well, cocky or confident, bringing up his hand and blasting him with, well, electricity. As a weird glitch effect appears around him. And Deku recognizes, well, some of the symbols floating up in the air. Realizing exactly what this is. As everyone will walk out of the elevator. Deku just saying that this guy has a piece of Eden. That's funny. Usually those come to me. Or, well, I come to those. They don't come to me. I see. So. You are the architect, aren't you? Yes, I am. I'm guessing I pissed you off. Not me. My employers, actually. So. I was hired to take you down. Now. Let's begin. As the man would go to rush forwards. Deku using the apple to create illusions, along with a powerful shockwave. This combined with the Kony R doubles the power of it. So, Deku would begin. He forces the shockwave directly forwards. The man, largely unaffected, other than it just pushing him backwards, and him staying on his feet. Deku, intrigued. As he just brings up his firearm and begins to shoot once again. All of his friends doing the same. Trying to stay at a distance to the man. Well, the man, he does pull out his own firearm. And tries to begin shooting at Deku. Momo launching forwards. At 40%, the man not even seeing her move. As she blocks the bullet and immediately throws the shield his direction as it basically slams into the invisible wall he's created. So. <sighs> this is bastard. It's going to be tricky, isn't he? Deku doing one little thing. Creating multiple illusions. The man just staring at them all. As they all do walk around and circle him. His friends taking... Well, steps... Well, the steps taking a stance next to them. The man, not really sure what to do. He is completely surrounded, but he should be fine. His employer did say that this thing makes me invulnerable. Now, with that being said, Mina and all the distance fighters like Jiro, Bakugo, and, well, Shinsho, well, not Shinsho. Yeah, I guess he could be distance. Toga and Tokuyami, and along with Momo, do actually try stepping in, along with Todoroki. They all begin to fire different quirks at him. Now, Momo did make Toga a bit of a support item. It's at least a syringe with blood in it. That she can use whenever she needs to. She has a bit of multiple blood pills, as she calls them, lined throughout the inside of her coat. So... She would pull one out and immediately swallow it. As she would send a large gust of fire directly at the man. Copying Todoroki's quirk. Him just looking at her as he's still firing off his eye side. Actually beginning to walk around. Her doing the same. Todoroki actually does switch off sides. The Creed has taught him not to, well, at least hold back. So, he would send out a large gust of blue fire, getting more serious. The man is still staying there, largely unaffected. Deku doing one little thing. 
immediately running forwards as all of his clones do the same. All of them begin to grab onto the invisible wall, and actually start shocking at it. While everyone tries to step up, the man, well, still there. Telling Deku that he's not going to get through this thing. As one thing does happen, Momo rushes in. As soon as she rushes in, she does immediately watch Deku's clones disappear. The man just staying there confidently. Momo bring her hand upwards and actually getting through this man's invisible fields. Punching him directly across his face. The man a bit surprised as he gets sent flying through a wall. Her just saying that apparently her idea was right. Deku confused. Her just saying that she wanted to give a shot because no one was going at close range. Deku taking notice to that. So, Ida. Ida immediately just going in a running stance, using reciprocal burst, running towards his direction. As he jumps upwards into the air and boosts up through the up into the hole in the wall, and trying to follow the man. Everyone else heading outside. As the man is running away, he thought he was completely invulnerable as long as he wore the ring. Apparently that's not true. So, Ida would be running behind him, as you have Tokoyami not too far behind, along with Toga. So, things are different. As he gets somewhat cornered, Jiro comes falling into the alley as she immediately just turns up her, well, turns up her sound. And immediately sends a loud gust of it in his direction. The man's somewhat covering his ears. It's not the fact that the sound's bouncing off, well, the alleyway, but it's just that it's very, very loud. He thought he was fine with it, but now it's getting worse. Especially because he's basically stuck inside of a box, in an alleyway, making it 20 times louder. As Momo would immediately run in, grabbing up behind him and grabbing and crushing part of his hand. The man confused, as Momo would immediately grab the ring and tear off his finger. In the process, the man dropping to the ground and actually screaming. Momo goes to actually bring her blade up, standing over the man. As she is about to kill him, Deku actually somewhat stopping her, saying that they need him alive. So, he will be useful. Part of our little adventure. As Deku does actually gather up more of the men. Along with the couple days going by, and meeting some of these high official Abstergo agents in their apartments, ambushing them. As there would be a bit of a late night show. Along with a little bit of a, well, idea. Momo has created the supplies. And the Creed possibly will not approve of this. So they would do it at one of Deku's safe houses. Sending out a broadcast, along with Momo basically filling the streets with flyers that she created, passing them out at high speeds, and leaving them everywhere. Telling people to tune in to this station at this day, at this exact time. Do not miss it for the world, because it will break the news. People curious and people skeptical. They would want to see what they have planned. How exactly will this work? The station is usually dead around this hour. So, what will happen tonight? As the broadcast would start, and there is one someone holding the camera. Hello, everyone. As you can see, this is no normal broadcast. Yes, I am the architect. In the flesh. So, I have...
has some very, very high-ranking historical officials behind me. Now, if anyone can guess what we're doing tonight, there is a reason for this broadcast. A week and a half ago up Strogo, they thought that they can just tell one side of the story. They thought they could say that I was a villain, that I was a no-good vigilante. So, I will say this right now. I have never killed an innocent man. So, how about we do something? A little bit of an experiment, as you can call it. Now, people are in shock by this. The architect is in the, well, well, the flesh. He's real. He's alive, and just as some people have seen him or described him. Not just that, but he's packing a little extra heat. He has knives lined along his belt. And a firearm. Along with these weird things, apparently up his sleeve, right next to his, well, shirt. Or along his wrist. Deku, he would quite simply just snap his fingers. Lights turning on. People watching as there are a lot of people, well, tied up behind Deku. On their knees. People do notice them. They are the Abstergo employees that have gone missing. Along with that, people, they have, well, somewhat notice that there are men in the background also wearing the Task Force logo for Abstergo. They're the unit that was specially made to handle the vigilantes, or help the police force, as Abstergo called it, a private military contractor that they signed off on. Along with that, other people in masks would step forwards, as it is everyone else. People surprised. The architect doesn't work alone. That is frightening. Deku just saying that... Now, as you can see, the... well, people behind me, that are joining me, they are my allies. They all have their own secret identities. Abstergo has tried to fuck us over one way or another. In fact, some of the information I hold in my hand right here... Deku just holding it up to the camera, flipping through different notes and showing it. As people can see that these are legitimate Abstergo files. They have symbols, they have, well... Certain things on them that make them legit. If someone who does paperwork for a living sees the broadcast, they can tell you that these are actual documents by Abstergo, not forgeries. Deku just holding up one specific paper, saying that Abstergo will do anything to make a quick buck, along with taking information illegally. This is a paper of last year that they made, or well, abandoned. Along with in a minute, we'll be showing you some footage of Sturgo has, well, sadly not released. This would be something that I think they should show. And those little trailers about why it's their company is so good, don't you all agree? Deku holding up a paper of UA. It shows documents about the USJ. As quite a lot of people would be in shock and confused. Abstergo had a hand in helping villains kill children. That is horrifying. And disgusting. Along with that, the TV screen would cut. People confused at what's going on. Seeing there are many, many tests on humans. About the whole Assassin's Project. Or as Abstergo calls it, their Project E. Now, as soon as that happens, it would, the screen would cut back to Deku, holding the camera in his hands. Well then, let's go around the room and introduce our guest, the men from Abstergo. This is actually one of the men responsible for, well, trying to silence us. 
He was actually made and hired by Abstergo as a private, private military contractor. Then, next to him, we have an assassin. Yes, Abstergo has hiring hitmen. Isn't that beautiful, everyone? This company. Truly, truly something special. Now, I will reiterate once again. I have never, never in my life killed an innocent man. Taku putting his hand on the man's shoulders. As he says, and once again I will say, Taku snapping his neck, the man dropping to the ground. That point still stands. People somewhat screaming. As Taku does tell them that, these people have gotten away with it for far, far too long. Then you have the head of the company. He's been after me for quite some time. In fact, I do believe it is right to share one little thing about me. Abstergo has been hunting me my whole life. There are, in fact, the reason why my parents are dead. If you do not know what I'm talking about, then I will tell you. If you have a fascinating quirk to Abstergo, they will find you, and they will try and dig their fingers into your family. And once they got that use out of you, you are dead meat. Deku bring his hand or his thumb across his neck, saying that once again, do not work with this company. In fact, they are not just that. I would like to introduce myself properly this time. Now, as the voice changer turns off, Jakku doing one thing, pulling off his mask and taking off the hood, saying that his name is Izuku Midoriya and my father was killed when I was four. Abstergo, they hired him on. And whenever my father wouldn't do something that Abstergo wanted, he threatened to reveal their secrets. They killed him in a fake car accident, covering it up and, well, leaving my mother to raise me. The following week, Abstergo, as Deku walks around the room, putting his hands on the assassin that tried to kill him, saying that they tried so desperately to keep things quiet. And what do they do? Mister, as Deku brings his hand up to the man's throat, saying, what did they do? They faked your death. That's right. They didn't just fake it. They tried to make it real. They blew up my house, me barely escaping. So... Once again, Abstergo, you wanted to reveal my face. I'm doing it myself. But I'm not the only one going down. In fact, I can get away with this. You can't. You've been doing this for over 200 years. And now, you fucked up. Your paper trail goes so far back, anyone involved with you is going down. So, I believe that is a turning point. Deku just bring a blade out of his wrist, stabbing it into the assassin's neck. The man falling to the ground, Deku just sliding the blade back into his, well, holder for it. Saying that this will conclude the broadcast. So, if you're wondering where we are, we are currently on as Deku does name the property doing one thing afterwards, walking off screen, the people stepping forwards. As Deku does one little thing, he gets a gas can and puts his mask back on. As everyone starts snapping the necks of the people, Abstergo has, well, there are claws in too deep. Basically the people who have had a hand in t doing the USJ attack collectively taking revenge. 
while for the rest of them, Deku just begins to pour the gasoline. Now, Deku, after pouring the gasoline, would hand a box of matches over to Jiro as they begin to pass them all around. Now, everyone who was at the USJ gets a match, as they would do one thing, collectively all lighting them and saying that these are for their friends, dropping the matches, as the entire well, group of people would immediately catch fire and the screen would go black, Deku finally allowing them to cut the broadcast as they all make their way out of the building and head down into the sewers. It might be gross, but it's their fastest getaway. Now, with that being said, they would all meet up roughly two to three hours outside the city. Deku actually saying that that was actually a bit more fun. Everyone just, well, a bit hyped up and full of adrenaline. As one thing would happen. Shinsho, he is talking with Toga. Toga just doing one thing. She is somewhat brainwashes Shinsho for a second using his quirk and immediately just kiss him. Shinsho being confused and re-snaps back out of it. As people just somewhat begin to laugh them camping out in the woods for a little bit of time, as eventually cars would pull up, it being the assassins. Now, with that being said, Deku would be immediately pulled aside by the elder that he's talked to before, them basically telling Deku that he had a right idea, but not consoling them about this was very bad. So, how do you care to explain yourself? Deku is somewhat smirking, the Elder being very pissed off. As Deku holds up something in between his fingers, the man confused, realizing that this is a piece of Eden. Deku just saying that he had a lead, and he followed it. Along with that, he found dirt on Abstergo, so he used it before they can destroy it. Well, this does not... Hmm. You do not involve the League in your actions, but you told everyone that you were alive. Along with that, we saw your broadcast. They heard all of you whenever you said this is for your friends, meaning that suspicion will be thrown your way. The UA survivors, they are still considered to be missing and unfound. We actually are still working on faking your deaths, each one of them around the country. So, none of you will be held liable for this, but Midoriya, your repercussion will be extra training, along with all of you. That will be it. You will have no false punishment. Nothing like, well, what happens in the old days. So, along with collecting a piece of Eden, that will be it. Now, we will leave you be. Just, well, call us whenever you need something. As the men that all pulled up would all hop into one car and drive away. Deku actually a bit, well, excited, along with holding out the ring in his hand. The man handed the ring back to Deku, and told him to hang on to it and actually study it. This piece will be very important, because they have not seen anything like it, so it will be still way too valuable to lose. Along with that, each piece of Eden that he collects, he seems to master or at least understand more and more about the technology. So, Deku, he needs someone. He needs a bit of a device built, and he's not sure if the device will at least last for as long as he needs it to. Along with that, he does actually want to 
study upon the ring properly. But he wants to do something with it first. As he turns around, Taroki is somewhat lit a fire while everyone else is relaxing. You have Ochako and Ida actually sitting next to each other, somewhat talking more and more, along with both of them somewhat being flustered, while you have Kendo and Bakugo somewhat pairing off. The two basically are already, well, sucking face with each other. Deku actually taking a seat, right next to Momo, as she does actually basically get into his lap. Deku basically holding her, telling her that tonight was actually really fun. They should have more nights like this. Yeah, we should. Toppling multi-billion dollar corporations and, well, campfires. What can I say? I am a very complex man. Oh, I know about that. As she just begins to kiss him. Now, with that being said, everyone is somewhat happy and enjoying their time. As Deku does at least ponder something in his head. He's never made a rash decision before in his life. So, it's a better time to start than any. And this one might be the craziest. As he just makes a bit of an announcement. He actually does stand up and get Moe to stand too. As he bends down on one knee, holding up the ring. Asking her to marry him. Everyone's somewhat shocked and actually cheering her on to say yes. Her doing one simple thing, putting on the ring and immediately kissing Deku. Deku thought that would be a good idea. Along with that, the ring is actually, well, something she did get, so she deserves to keep it. For a little bit of time. They are going to study it later. With that being said, someone has been at least following Deku and his team. They somewhat lived nearby, well, the safe house Deku was at, and they would zoom out, thinking that, well, whatever that was, it was pretty complex. So, she wants to get her hands on it. Now, with that, she would start making her way closer to the campsite. Now, with that being said, I do believe that's a good ending point right there. So I do hope you guys enjoyed the video.